Yeah, okay, so uh, let us start from where we, uh, you know, left in the last lecture. So in the last lecture we discussed, I think my voice is audible to you and my screen is also visible. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so in the last lecture we talked about how to utilize this Euler method to, you know, draw the layouts. In fact, the optimum layouts, that is layouts with the smallest possible area. And we also learned, you know, this Euler path or Euler uh, method, this facilitates us uh, to, you know, decide the ordering of or the placement of the gates or the number of transistors. So whatever number of transistors we have, so optimum placement can also be ensured along with minimum uh, routing or wiring. Right? So that can be ensured by this Euler's method. Now, uh, you know, if we talk about calculating the delay of any complex logic circuit, so for example, here we have a two input NAND gate and also a two input NOR gate is present over here. So one can represent the MOSFETs by their equivalent resistances and apply, you know, a simple either Elmor delay model method or maybe by simply saying the RC delay uh, by calculating the RC delay. Uh, one can find out the delay of any complex logic network right so for example here in this two input nand gate the delay at the output let's say tpls so tpls will be different in these two cases i mean when the inputs are let's say zero zero or maybe when the inputs are zero one and one zero so both the cases the delay would be different so for example when the two mosfets are on the delay would be different when only one mosfet in the pull-up network is on so the delay will be somewhat else. Okay. So similar uh, thing will happen in NOR2 case also, that is to input NOR gate also. So in fact, you will find that when both these MOSFETs are on, and let us say the resistances of these two MOSFETs are RP, so the total resistance will be RP by 2. So the delay, that is TPLH, would be equal to uh, 0.69 RP by 2 CL, right? if both MOSFETs are on. So similarly, if one of these two are on, the delay will be 0.69 RPCL. So obviously it is seen here that the delay in this case is larger than the delay in this case. So that means that my input pattern, this affects the delay of uh, the uh, circuit. So any circuit delay can be affected by the input pattern. So for example, here we have seen the delay in this case is larger then the delay in this case because here only one MOSFET was on here both the MOSFETs were on okay. so similarly for high to low transition the delay will be equal to 0.69 uh, to RNCL right so we have RN and RN so they are in series so both the MOSFETs are on then only high to low transition is possible so the total delay in high to low transition is 0.69 to RNCL now this Delay dependence dependence on input pattern can also be simulated. So this simulation is being presented here. So for this simulation, the NMOS PMOS uh, ratio of width and L length was NMOS was 0 0.5 by 0 0.25 micron width W by L, and PMOS had 0 0.75 micron by 0 0.25 micron W by L, and the load capacitance at the output was considered to be 100 femtofarads. So in this case, you will find that the delay is minimum for this combination of input. That is when both A and B are making a transition from one to zero. Okay. Similarly, the delay is maximum in this case, where when A was one and B is making a transition from one to zero. So again, it can be related to the same effect. That is which MOSFET is on and, and how much resistance or how much capacitance is included at the output because of uh, you know MOSFETs which are on. So based on that, the delay can be calculated. So the delay has been seen. I mean, variations in the delay uh, can be seen here uh, with the variations in the input patterns. So this can be simulated. Now, one would also uh, not like to stack the PMOS transistors in uh, you know circuit design. So it is advised to avoid stacking of PMOS transistors. Stacking means here again connecting the PMOS transistors in series. So this is not advised. So 
it is advised to avoid this as much as possible that is a stacking of pmos transistors so for example this is a nor two input nor gate okay so it is advised not to use nor gate as far as possible instead you utilize nand implementation so nand implementation is preferred over nor implementation because nor implementation like this it has a stacking of pmos transistors and since pmos since p type transistors have lower mobility holes have lo lower mobility so the resistance of pmos is also high and when they are in series so the resistance adds up and the delay that is tplh will also be more in this case right though the capacitance at the output will be small obviously because of this pmos but yes the delay because of huge resistances because of the mobility of holes being smaller so because of that the resistances are high and because of that the uh, delay that is tplh will also be large so it is advised to not use nor implementation in fact nand and nor are universal gates one can implement any logic using these two but it is it is advised that don't use nor instead use nand as far as possible now one can think of sizing the transistors in any cmos circuit okay so for that let us consider cmos inverter as a reference inverter gate reference gate so cmos inverter will consider as a reference gate and in reference to this cmos inverter you will try to uh, size any logic gate right or any other logic function so cmos inverter is considered as reference uh, gate so in this reference gate uh, let's say that the pmos is twice as wider than the nmos okay so obviously that means if i have a resist let's say that resistance of nmos is rn and the resistance of uh, the pmos is rp okay so this is my reference inverter so i'll uh, want to size other logic circuits in reference to this cmos inverter okay so that is i want to equalize the resistances of the pull up and pull down network for example if i want to size two input nand gate let us say that pull down network first of all let us talk about this pull down network okay so pull down network has a resistance of rn in my uh, you know reference uh, gate that is cmos inverter so the pull down networks uh, resistance in this two input nand gate should also be rn okay so how to ensure it is rn so to ensure that it is rn uh, we need to make the width of uh, this nmos as 2 and also this nmos as 2 because these two are connected in series so now the total resistance that this will offer will be rn by 2 in reference to the reference inverter and this will also be rn by 2 okay and when both these two will be on so obviously it will be equal to rn the resistance of the pull down network will be rn so this is matching the reference inverter's uh, resistance of pull down network similarly for pull up network this one so one would size it similarly so for pull up network let us say when only when one mosfet is on let's say a is only on okay so when only one mosfet is on the resistance of pull up network matches the resistance of the pull up network of a reference inverter right so that is which is rp over here okay. now when both these two mosfets are on a and b so then the total resistance is rp by 2 right acceptable it's not larger than rp that is this one reference inverter resistance of pull up network okay so one of these two on or on are on so this is rp and when uh, you know uh, both are on so it is rp by 2 so it is acceptable it is not larger than at least rp similarly if one tries to size a two input nor gate okay? so one can size the same way so let's say pull down network we talk about so for pull down network let us say only one of these two transistors are on so one of these two transistors are on the resistance of pull down network matches the resistance of inverter okay. when both are on so the total resistance will be in parallel that is rn by 2 smaller than rn that's okay not the best case but it's lower than rn similarly for pull up network if i size it by 4 4 that is make the width four times okay that is double the uh width of the reference inverter so this becomes rp by 2 here and this also becomes rp by 2 and when both these mosfets are on and total resistance will be equal to rp that is uh the uh, resistance of the pull up network of my uh, reference inverter so that way one can think of sizing 
any SEMA circuit, right? Not just NAND and NOR gates, but any SEMA circuit can be sized by considering the uh, reference inverter size, right? So uh, similarly, one can think of sizing uh, this complex logic function function that is, uh, which is implementing output as D plus A dot B plus C whole bar, right? So can you try sizing? Let us say that CMOS inverter I have, which is what I'm using as a reference gate. Okay? And the sizes of these two MOSFETs are two and one. Okay. Yeah, so can you size now? So what would be the size of D, let us say, pull down network we want to size first. Okay, so here I have output. So what would be the size of D here, let's say pull down network. So for pull down network, again, I'll assume that any of these two paths, that is either this path is on, that is D is on only, or either A dot B plus C are on. So two paths we have. Okay. So any of these two are on, the resistance should match the resistance of pull down network of my CMOS inverter, which is one. So that means that D should be one. The size of D should be one. Okay. Can you size the rest of the transistors? So D should be one. So that means the combination of A dot B plus C. So total resistance of this should also be one. That is A dot B plus C. So if I keep A as two, right? So A as two. Okay, so that the resistance of this will be Rn by 2 and then the total resistance of B plus C that is this one. So this should also be Rn by 2. Right? So in series it will become Rn. The total resistance of this should be Rn by 2. So that this will become Rn. So when both are on A and B and C. So both are on. All three are on. So that should be total resistance should be Rn. Okay. So that means B and C. Sir, yeah. in this case, the overall uh, resistance will become one by two. Then the pull down, yeah. pull down network. Yeah, correct. So that will be when both these networks are on. This one and this one, right? So imagine only one of them and them is on. So then it will be only equal to Rn, right? So only when one is on, so then it will be equal to Rn. So one of these, that is this one, or maybe this one. Right. Sir, yeah, sir, please, please, please. Sir, do we always look for like this? Only one will be on. We will not consider the case when both of the. Yeah, you have to. You have to consider best case and worst case. Okay, sir. So, right. sir, worst will be when uh, both are on. No, worst will be when one is on. So okay. that is how. Yeah. So speed will be small, right? The charging currents or maybe discharging currents will be low if one of these networks are on. So that will be the worst case. Okay. So the best case you are you are finding that delay is Rn by two. Sorry, the resistance of pull down network is Rn by two. But in the worst case, it is equal to Rn. So uh, one can size these two. That means these should will bear a size of four, okay. isn't it? So then only this will be equal to then uh, you know Rn by four. I know. Yeah, so this should be four, I think. Maybe let us rub everything, erase everything. So first one should be one, two. Oh, this should be two. Yeah, these should be two. Sorry. So this is now Rn by two. And these two are also Rn by two. So then also we have to again consider two again separate networks here. So either A and B are on or A and C are on. Right. So then it is Rn, this path, AB, and AC is also Rn. So similarly, one can size this MOSFET D. So the size of D would come as 4 okay, in the pull-up network. And A is 4, then B 8, and C also 8. Right? So one way is to size like this. Then the other way could be that you keep D that is P MOS as 6 and then A as 3 and C and B of PMOS also 6. Right? So two ways are possible here. So one can size using any of these two ways. Right? So not Excuse just... Me, sir. Yeah, please. Uh, sir, B and C won't be taken as parallel. 
B and C. This one, these two. The resistance, yes. Yeah, these will be in parallel. So it should be four, na? That is by R N by four. Yes. Yeah, so then R N by four and R N by four will be uh, R N by two. Yes. Yeah, so consider only this is on. That is A and B are on. So this is how much R N by two and R N by two. Okay, we need to take it pathwise. Yeah, because it is possible that only A B path is on, or maybe only A C path is on. So high to low is possible. Either if only D is on and this is entire A B C are off, or maybe D is off and A B is on, or A C is on. Right. So okay, all okay. So got your point. Possible scenarios one has to consider. So what if B and C both are on? So that is okay. Good. In that case. B and C both are on. आर <laughs> so that we one can size any complex logic gate not just this and not just nand and nor gates okay now uh, let us also talk about the fan in consideration that is what happens if the fan in is very large okay so we see that if the fan in is large let us say that i have a fan in of 4 here so obviously with the fan in of 4 this is a four input nand gate so with the fan in of 4 the capacitance here cl so this is also modified So if I have only uh, uh, you know a fan in of two, so this capacitance will only uh, have a contribution from A and B. Okay? But if I have a fan in of four, so A, B, C, D. I mean four times C L. So C L has become four times C L. It is four times the capacitance of one MOSFET, one P MOS, right? One P MOS. Let us say capacitance of all P MOSs that is A, B, C, D all are same. So total capacitance has increased by four C P. So if it is, I mean, it is increased by two CP. Total is now four CP. Okay. So that effect can be seen when uh, you know one calculates the delay of this circuit using the Elmore delay model. So if I try to calculate TPHL using Elmore delay method, okay, TPHL that is high to low okay, from this high to low that is here, TPHL using Elmore delay model. So one will find that delay is. Can be given by this relation: 0.6 R1 C1, R1 plus R2 C2, R1 plus R2 R3 C3, and this R1 plus R2 R3 R4 Cl. So this term is contributing to maximum delay in this equation. In fact, this term contribution, the contribution from this term goes up with increasing number of fan in. Okay, since Cl is also increasing with the number of fan in. So, so the propagation delay also will deteriorate because CL is becoming larger. So TPHL will also become uh, large. So propagation delay degrades rapidly as a function of fan in that means. Right. In fact, it uh, degrades quadratically in the worst case scenario. So in fact, when all resistances are equal, so one can arrive at this relation that is R equivalent N C1 plus 2 C2. 3C3 per 4CL. This 4CL dumps. So this is causing you know the maximum delay. So and that is because of the addition of extra MOSFETs with the extra fan in. So one can also simulate TP as a function of fan in. That is delay as a function of fan in. And one can find out that with the increase in fan in. So this is x axis we have fan in, and on the y axis we have delay. so one can see that after this point maybe after this point the delay increases rapidly in fact the delay that is tphl that increases quadratically with respect to the number of uh, inputs that is fan in and tp because of that tp also that is total propagation delay also rises up okay. so it is advised to not have a fan in of more than 4 because after that the delay increases rapidly Right, so gates with fan in greater than four should be avoided because after that the delay increases rapidly. Similarly, the delay as a function of fan out, so that can also be simulated. Uh, now uh, here you will find that 
three gates are simulated with respect to the fan out right so fan out is again present on the x axis and we see that the delay of nor gate two input nor gate so that is the uh, largest among all these yeah because of the same effect that is nor to has uh, two p moshes stacked up in the pull up network so because of that the delay also goes up right so that is why it is advised to use only nand implementation so in fact with the increase in fan out so we see that the delay is also increasing right now uh, so based on this one can arrive at these two points that is fan in is a quadratic function i mean sorry the delay is a quadratic function of fan in due to increasing resistance and capacitance the delay uh, increases with increase in fan in so similarly second point can be arrived at that is uh, uh, fan out so what happens to the delay when you increase the fan out so each additional fan out gate right so each additional fan out gate adds two gate capacitances so each additional fan out gate here it is assumed that the additional gate is inverter right so when we add an extra inverter at the output here so this inverter is associated with uh, two mosfets p mos and n mos so basically the gate capacitance of these two mosfets will come into uh, picture at the load capacitance so each additional fan out gate adds two gate capacitance to the load capacitance so fan out also has should have some limitation otherwise the delay can be larger or large because of this fan out also so how to design fast complex gates right? so one technique to design fast transistor uh, fast complex gate is uh, using transistor sizing okay? so one can think about sizing the transistors that is raising the size of the transistor so that the delay can be brought down because the resistances of uh, you know pmos and nmos can also be brought down because of increase in transistor size so delay can also be brought down but this sizing up should only be done as long as the fan out capacitance dominates okay so if the gate capacitance starts dominating that is gate is get uh, gate has started self loading itself so then one should you know stop uh, further sizing up the transistors in that particular gate so as long as fan out capacitance is dominating one can think of sizing the transistors up so now sizing also can be done in uh, this way that is what we call as progressive sizing okay so for example i have a stack of n mos here in the pull down network maybe this is uh, let's say the pull down network of a four input nand gate let us say so it is possible to size these transistors also okay so for example one can keep the transistor which is closest to the output it is that is this point is cl cl closest to the output so this transistor can be kept small smallest okay so that the load capacitance is also small because of the contribution from the drain diffusion capacitance of this transistor the load capacitance can also be brought down to a small value if the the uh, transistor which is closest to the output is small okay so similarly one can then think of sizing the other transistors in this manner that is m1 can be greatest i mean largest so m1 is greater than m2 and then m3 and then mn is the uh, smallest that is this one is the transistor which is closest to the output is the smallest so now this technique that is progressive sizing of transistors so this can reduce delay by more than 20% okay so that can also be verified by some simulation maybe you can simulate a nand gate with keeping the sizes same and when you know the sizes are progressively varied okay so that way one can think about uh reducing the delay up to somewhere around 20% by using this technique progressive sizing now the other technique of reducing the delay is called input sir yeah please sir that is that is nand gate no sir previous slide yeah this is nand gate pull up network is not shown the pull down is shown sir means we have to only size n mosses and we should not size p mosses sir yeah p mos also you should size So okay. P mosses are in parallel, so stacking effect is not there. So sizing is done only where you know uh, stacking uh, stacking effect is uh, there. So maybe in pull down network needs sizing, uh, you know, more than the pull up network. So progressive sizing can be done here, but not there in the pull up network because all are in parallel. So one of them is on. That could be the worst case scenario. Okay. 
now the other technique for designing a complex logic gate would be called as input reordering okay so for example in this case you will see that number 1 here i'll write number 1 case and number 2 so in case number 1 you see that the transistor number m1 so m1 is going a transition that is transition is going from 0 to 1 right so all other two mosfet in m2 and m3 they already are having a input 1 1 but the transition is going at m1 right so m1 is now getting on so it was earlier off from 0 to 1 right so when m1 becomes on then high to low is possible right that is the discharging cycle that is high to low operation can be performed so during high to high low the uh, you know cl has to be discharged then c2 also has to be discharged and c1 also has to be discharged now c1 and c2 are again associated with the drain and source diffusion capacitances of uh, these mosfet that is m3 and m2 and m1 and m2 right so all these three capacitances have to be discharged so obviously when all three capacitances have to be discharged the delay will be large right so delay will not be having only a contribution from cl but from c2 and c1 also so one can fix this by ordering reordering these inputs that is one can bring this input that is uh, input which is having a transition from 0 to 1 so that can be applied to this transistor m3 okay and m2 and m1 let us assume that they are already uh, been supplied with a value of 1 at the gate so that means they are already on so that means they are already discharged right c2 is also discharged c1 is also discharged now during tphl only cl has to be discharged when you know the transition goes from 0 to 1 at this gate so only cl has to be discharged so the delay will only be determined by the time to discharge this load capacitor cl not all this cl c2 c1 as was evident in this case so one can think about now this technique that is input reordering in such scenarios now the other uh, design technique would be uh, what we call as logic restructuring okay. so for example we saw that uh, you know the fan in so that has a limitation that is number of uh, fan in with the increase in number of fan in the delay also increases so here for example it it is a 3 4 5 6 7 8 it's a eight input nand gate okay so this eight input nand gate can be restructured so for example in this case it can be restructured into two four input nand gates okay or maybe four two input nand gates okay so since the delay for you know increases with five fan in so one can uh, you know remove this anomaly that is the delay was more for large fan in gate so that delay can be brought down by splitting a larger gate into a smaller gate with smaller number of inputs now the other technique for reducing the delay would be hello yeah please so in that case the delay will be more uh, when we split a large gate into smaller gates the uh, delay will also increase right because complexity increases number of gate increases the delay Uh, along with that increases also yeah with fan in actually the number of uh, you know with fan in i mean if you consider about eight input nand gates so it will have 16 transistors right 16 transistors so a four input nand gate gate will have eight transistors so this will also have eight transistors so the, the delay of these two trans, uh, nand gates will be smaller than the delay of eight input nand gates so similarly the delay of this these nand gates will be smaller than the delay of this nand gate in fact the delay of the entire chain will also be smaller than compared to delay of this chain okay, okay so yeah now the next design technique would be to reduce vdd or reduce voltage swing so we saw that delay was equal to uh, 0.69 rc it can be calculated by using this formula 0.69 rc so now r can again be splitted r can be uh, said equal to vdd by id sat right that is r equivalent of nmos or pmos so that can be equal to vdd by id saturation of either nmos or pmos so this is tphl so that's why we say only nmos okay. uh now so that that means that tphl now has a contribution from vdd so if you can reduce vdd this tphl can also be reduced so this is one of the technique that is reducing the voltage swing or reducing vdd can bring down tphl or delay but then yeah so linear reduction in delay is possible then it also reduces power consumption right so since dynamic power 
consumption we uh, saw that it was equal to cvdd square f so vdd can be brought down the so power consumption can also be brought down now but the problem with this would be that if you reduce the vdd the gate can become much slower right so gate can become much slower and in fact this technique that is reducing vdd so this can be applied to memory design so you you can design a low power memory by using this technique that is reducing voltage swing but then you'll have to also uh, you know use sense amplifiers on the receiving end to restore the signal level because signal levels will be very small in this case when vdd is small yeah, because drive current strength will also go down because of reduction in vdd so one may use sense amplifiers on the receiving end of the memory design for restoring the signal level sir the 3 by 4 sir in previous slide where it is come from sir 3.3 3 by 4 i think we had seen this 3 by 4 term also how it came so if you refer back to the previous uh, lecture you will find where this 3 by 4 comes from. comes from so, yeah, so this 3 by 4 was present there when we had read about uh, this thing in i think in chapter 3 it was there right so 3 by 4 term we discussed how this 3 by 4 term came excuse me sir yeah please sir what is mean by gate is much slower mm -hmm. gate is much slower means tphl and tplh are large okay is it okay yeah so uh, let us talk about the same delay equation that we applied to calculate the delay of the cmos inverter chain right so if you remember we applied a delay equation of this kind to calculate the delay of the cmos inverter chain and then we also found out how to uh, you know size the inverters in the chain right or the gates in the chain and then we also find out the optimum number of inverters that will minimize the delay that is n also we found out okay so we you utilize similar equation now how to generalize this technique to any logic path not just a chain of inverter but maybe instead of inverter i have a, a nand gate or maybe here i have a nor gate okay. so how do we do that right and maybe this is three input and maybe this is four inputs right so how to generalize this to any logic path not just inverter chain right so let us try to find out how and uh, in the previous uh, lecture i think not previous before that we had seen this equation for delay so delay was related to intrinsic delay tp not 1 plus f by gamma right so f was i think effective fan out that is cl by c in and gamma was 1 we had seen okay. now we also add two more parameters here in this equation and modify this equation one parameter is p and the other is g here right so what are p and g here so p is called ratio of intrinsic delay of the complex gate to the simple inverter so this is p that is ratio of intrinsic delay of complex gate and simple inverter since we want to generalize this to any logic chain that is maybe this is my complex gate now four input nand gate or maybe three input nor gate so i need to find out now ratio of intrinsic delays of complex gate to simple inverter so that is called now p here similarly i bring in another factor here g so g is called logical effort so what it is uh, we will try to understand very soon and then f is same effective fan out or electrical effort and gamma is one now this logical effort okay so logical effort represents the fact that for a given load you, know, you can read here and we have to remember this also that is logical effort represents the fact that for a given load complex gates have to work harder than an inverter to produce a similar response right so logical effort is the effort which is done or effort which is put in by the complex gate to produce a similar response uh, as an inverter right so for example we are now talking about the complex gates like this in the chain okay? so logical effort would mean that how much effort these gates will have to put in okay so that the performance of these gates are similar to what was the performance of the inverters in the chain because we want to generalize this equation to find out the delay of any logic chain or any 
chain of complex logic gate so logical effort is again i'll repeat logical effort is effort that is being put in by these complex logic gates so that the response of these complex logic gates is similar to the response of the cmos inverter okay, so that is logical effort in fact it is a measure of how much more input capacitance a gate presents to deliver the same output current as an inverter right so two definitions now here that is how much effort a gate has to put and how much more input capacitance a gate has to put to deliver the same output current as an inverter okay okay uh now let us talk about this p that is ratio of intrinsic delays of complex gate and simple inverter so if i try to uh, uh, you know find out let's say that my reference inverter inverter is my reference gate so if i try to find out p for a inverter so that means intrinsic delay of this complex logic gate inverter divided by the intrinsic delay of again the reference gate which is again a inverter right tp not of a complex logic gate by tp not of a reference gate so reference is now inverter here so that means the uh, the p of uh, you know inverter would be equal to 1 only right because tp not of inverter is equivalent to tp not of this reference gate which is again a inverter similarly for a n input nand gate so n input means again n equivalent resistances and n uh, you know capacitances associated with the uh, the mosfets okay so n input nand gate will have tp not as equal to n similarly n input nor gate tp not sorry the p will equal to be n similarly n way multiplexer to n so this can be found similarly for n input zor or x nor gate p can be found out by using same relation that is p is tp not by tp not of complex logic gate divided by tp not of reference gate that is inverter so this reference is inverter so one can find out tp not okay so which will be equal to this much now uh, uh, let us have few more definitions of logical effort in fact one would find that inverter has the smallest logical effort and intrinsic delay of all static cmos gates the right? inverter has just one uh, mosfet in the pull up network and one in the pull down network so it is assumed that or it is believed that it has the smallest logical effort and also is not smallest intrinsic delay of all static cmos gates now second point says logical effort of a gate this is important and maybe this you should remember logical effort of a gate presents the ratio of its input capacitance to the inverter capacitance when size to deliver the same current that is capacitance of complex logic gate divided by the complex of the reference gate which is inverter is reference inverter so this is actually the logical effort okay that is this much more input capacitance a gate has to a complex gate has to present to have equal charging current or have equal performances with respect to the inverter so this is called logical effort g right that is capacitance that is uh, the total input capacitance that a complex logic gate uh, presents okay divided by the total uh, capacitance of my reference gate which is inverter okay. now logical effort increases with the gate complexity so we'll verify i think this point all these three points in the next slide okay but yes let us remember uh, you know uh, this term maybe you can write down this uh, you know equation that is the logical effort g is equal to the capacitance of complex logic gate divided by the capacitance of reference gate input capacitance these are all input capacitance input capacitance of a reference gate which is inverter in this case now let us try to find out the logical efforts of the uh, you know two input nand gate and two input nor gate okay now let us consider again that i have a reference gate which is a cmos inverter which has a sizing of 2 is to 1 that is p mos is twice wider than the n mos okay now the logical effort of this gate would be how much 
so that logical effort means again i'll go back to the same uh, you know equation that is c of com complex gate that is input capacitance of complex gate right so input capacitance so one input here i have that is these two are same actually okay now since these two are size in the ratio 1 is to 2 let us say that the capacitance of this is c reference okay so because this is twice bigger pmos is twice bigger so this will be 2 c ref the input capacitance that is gate capacitance okay so the total capacitance which appears over here okay so that would be 3 times c reference so now the logical effort of cmos inverter will be equal to 3 c ref okay 3 c ref by 3 c ref okay 3 c ref by 3 c ref so that is equal to 1 right so we say that logical effort of cmos inverter is the uh, equal to 1 right similarly if i try to find out logical effort of a two input nand gate here and we understood how to size a NAND gate, to input NAND gate. So sizing would be in this manner, that is my NMOSs would be uh, sized with factor of 2 and PMOS would be sized with a factor of 2. Okay. So logical effort of this, so again we will decide the inputs first, these are one input and the other input is B, this one B here and this B. Now the gates of the MOSFETs associated with this. So this is again, uh, this is a 2 C ref, right? So this MOSFET that is which is connected to A and MOS, so the capacitance is 2 C ref. So I'll write 2 C ref and the capacitance, input capacitance of this also is 2 C ref. So the total capacitance which appears here, that is 4 C ref. So 4 C ref for both A and B inputs. Okay. So the total logical effort of this gate would be equal to 4 by 3 okay, because 3 C ref was the total uh, capacitance of my reference gate which is inverter. So now I have to divide the input capacitance of this gate divided by the input capacitance of my CMOS inverter which was reference. So it is 4 by 3. So similarly for this 2 input NOR gate. So this is 4 plus 1. Yes, this is 4. 4 plus 1, 5. So it is 5 by 3. Right? So logical effort of my 2 input NAR gate is 5 by 3. So can you find now logical effort of 3 input NAND gate? 3 input NAND gate and 3 input NAR gate. Yeah, can you find now 3 input NAND gates logical effort and similarly 3 input NAR gates logical effort? Sir, can you please tell once again, sir? Actually, sir, my net is fluctuating, sir. Sorry to. Okay. So, logical effort in this case of re reference inverter is, uh, you know, the capacitance associated with NMOS is C ref, and this one is 2 C ref. So, total is 3 C ref capacitance at the input, right? Similarly, for a NAND gate, the total input capacitance is for this MOSFET 2 C ref, for this MOSFET also 2 C ref. So, total is 4 C ref. So logical effort is input capacitance of the complex logic gate divided by input capacitance that my reference gate that is inverter offers. So that is 4 C ref by 3 C ref. So that is equal to 4 by 3. Similarly for this case, it will be 4 C ref for this plus 1 C ref for this. That is 5 C ref. So 5 C, 5 C ref by again 3 C ref. So that is equal to 5 by 3. So this is for 2 input NAND and NOR gate. So now what is for 3 input NAND and NOR gate? The logical effort. It will be same step. Same. Yes, sir. Same. It will be same step. Three input NAND gate, uh, non gate, NAND and NOR gate. Five by three for three input NAND gate. <laughs> okay. So let us see here. So for NAND gate, three input it will be five by three, and for three input NOR gate it will be seven by three. Is it okay? So one has to size also three input NAND and NOR gate, right? So for calculating the logical effort, one has to size also the three input NAND and NOR gate. So you cannot keep the sizes same 
as we had for two input NAND and NOR gate. So sizes would be different of these transistors in a three input NAND and NOR gate. So depending on sizes, you will find that a three input NAND gate has a logical effort of five by three and NOR gate seven by three. Similarly, a N input NAND gate, I mean, this can be generalized. Uh, this will be n plus 2 by 3 and for NOR gate n input this will be 2n plus 1 by 3. Similarly for 2 input multiplexer it will be 2. 3 input multiplexer 2. For n input multiplexer it will again be 2. Similarly for XOR gates 2 input XOR gate it is 4. 3 input is, it is 12. Okay. So, so uh, like this one can find out the logical effort of any gate. Okay. Now this logical effort will be required in this delay equation. So that is why we want to calculate. Hello, sir. Yeah, please. Sir, sir, that input 3C ref is a constant, sir. What? Can you please repeat? The 3C reference you taken uh, in the denominator, sir. In okay. the and and the 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 of course, so you have to follow this formula that is complex logic gates input capacitance by capacitance of input reference gate. So this will always be constant. Okay. Excuse me, sir. Yeah, please. Uh, sir, in case of multiplexer, uh, the logical effect is always constant irrespective of the inputs. So can you explain why it is yeah, you 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 please check how it is constant i mean it's a two input multiplexer or maybe a three input multiplexer so how it is constant maybe i mean it is easily it can be found right so you can draw a two input multiplexer by maybe maybe using two and gates and one or gate okay. two and gates and one or gates so then you can apply the same thing that is find out its uh, CMOS circuit okay. for a two input, sorry, two input multiplexer. Find the CMOS circuit like this and then size the CMOS circuit and then find the logical effort. Okay. So that can be found. Maybe you can find it out. But, sir, okay. as n increases, then the complexity of the circuit will also increase. So, have you drawn the uh, transistor level circuit of two input multiplexer? Uh, no, sir. So then how can you say, so please first of all draw, spend some time and then talk, right? So maybe no. then we can talk. Yeah? Okay, so unless you draw the transistor level circuit of this two input multiplexer and then you size this, then I mean, we should not speak about these numbers, right? But yes, these NAND and NOR, we have, I have already shown how to do this. So then yes, of course, we can talk about this too. Because you know now how to draw the circuit and also how to size these transistors. So here you have, have to work out. Similarly, okay. this one also will have to work out. So it will come same. This has been verified. Okay. So uh, now let us uh, again come back to our delay equation since we wanted to generalize the delay equation to any uh, chain of any logic functions. Okay. So this was my uh, delay equation. And uh, now we have also calculated G also and P also we know. Right. So now this can be generalized by saying j is 1 to n and pj, fj, gj okay. and h or gate effort. So that is again defined by fg multiplied by f multiplied by g okay. and f1 uh, now uh, similar to what we did for the inverter chain, one can now find out the minimum delay through the path that is minimum delay through this chain can be found by uh, you know, uh, finding out n minus one partial derivatives because here again you have n minus one uh, unknowns, right? So here also you have n minus one unknowns, and uh, those unknowns can be found out by again finding out n minus one partial derivatives for this equation and then setting them to zero. Okay? Then if you do that, you will find that each stage will have same effort, should bear the same gate effort. That is H of each stage, that is H1, H2, H, H3, all will be equal to same, yeah, will be same. That is F1, G1 will be equal to F2, G2, 
will be equal to F3G3. So this equation can be arrived at. Okay. Now the total fan out of the chain, that is capital F. So that is equal to all small f, I mean the product of all small f, that is capital F is equal to F1, F2 and so on, Fn. That is equal to total uh, fan out of the chain, that is Cl by Cg1. Okay. Similar to what we had done for the inverter chain. And similarly, total capital G. So capital G will be equal to the product of all small g's, g1, g2 to n. And similarly, then capital H, that is here we had small h. So this can now be modified. So we can say that total capital H, so that will be equal to, that is total effort of the chain. So that will be equal to capital F multiplied by capital G, which we have found here. Okay. Now, this we have to actually use here in this delay equation, how we will use, I'll tell you. Then suppose I have branches in my path. So earlier we had only discussed a straight chain which did not have branches. So suppose we have branches of such kind, okay? that is one branch is coming out here and which is attached to some other complex logic gate. Okay? So one has to include now in this case, branching factor. So this branching factor is given by this relation that is capacitance on path capacitance of path divided by capacitance on path right so capacitance on path is the load capacitance of the gate along the path and off path capacitance is the capacitance of the connections that lead off the path so for example this is my path and c off will obviously be the capacitance associated with this cmos inverter okay. so capacitance off path will include the capacitance of this inverter and capacitance on path will include the capacitance of all the inverters which are appearing in this part. That is, this may be my input node and here is my output node. So the total branching, uh, uh, you know, effort, that is B, can be found out by uh, taking the product of all the branching efforts of all branches. So here only one branch has been shown. So it is possible that you have another branch over here, maybe some other branch here, right? So all branching efforts have to be uh, you know, one has to take product to arrive at the total branching effort. So that is why we say that total branching effort is equal to product of 1 to n bi. Right? That can be given by this relation. Now, since b is modified, so f should also be modified. Right? So f was earlier equal to, a multi, you know, multiplication or product of all small f. Right? So here, if you go back, uh, you know, capital F, so that was equal to the product of all small f. So now we modify the capital F, that is total fan out of the chain by bringing in the branching effort. So total uh, fan out of the chain is now equal to the product of Fi, that is all uh, small uh, Fi divided by the total branching effort. So now H, that is capital H, which was equal to uh, capital F multiplied by capital G. So that can also be modified. So this becomes capital H becomes now equal to uh, G F B, right? capital G, capital F and capital B. Now B, we have included the branching effort. So earlier capital H, uh, H was only equal to capital G, capital F, right? this one. So now with branching effort, it becomes capital G F B. Okay. Uh, now we can also have a relationship between the fan out of a one gate to the fan out of the entire chain as we had in the previous case of the CMOS inverter chain. So there we had F, small f was an F root. Yeah, sir. Please. Sir. Yeah, please. sir, if that, if there is the previous slide, sir, the branch to the branch, how can we calculate, sir? Yeah, branching effort by using, if another branch by is using this relation. Right, so by using. No, sir, that uh, starting branch start if i have another branch then yeah. it, it holds goodness sir. correct so you this, use this formula so same formula you have to use now c off path will change so all branching effort that is all b1 b2 b3 you will find and then take product so total branching effort can be found and by using same formula but off path will change off path capacitance will change now similar to what we had in the previous case of cmos in water chain where we had a relationship between the effective fan out, total effective fan out of the chain with the effective fan out of the gate, one can find out same relationship between small h and capital H. 
So now here that relation is that small h is nth root of capital H. And all our gate efforts. So the delay through the path can be modified now. So this delay is modified now. So this becomes equal to TP naught j is equal to n pj plus n times nth root of h divided by gamma. Okay. Now this can be applied to find out the delay of any chain, right? Any chain with any uh, complex logic function, not just Siemens inverter. Now the sizing of the logic gates, right? So that can also be found. So earlier we had uh, seen that the sizing of the CMOS inverter chain was done like this. That is one f f square f cube and so on. So similarly, the sizing of uh, the complex logic gates in the chain can also be done. Okay. Now the sizing fa factor can be found out. Okay. So before that, uh, one has to remember that the the input capacitance. So input capacitance, for example, related to this gate. Okay. So that will be equal to G1, let's say that, uh, uh, yeah, maybe, let's say that this is my gate number one. Uh, let's say that this is my gate number, or maybe this is gate two and this is gate one. Okay. So let's say that we want to find out the input capacitance, total capacitance, which is offered by this gate, that is for which the logical effort is G1. Okay. So for this gate, the input capacitance, so that will be, that is CG1, so that will be equal to G1 times C ref, okay, G1 times C ref. And now suppose this gate is sized by S1. So the total input capacitance of this gate will be equal to G1 times S1 times C ref. So that one has to understand, right? So this is the input capacitance of the first gate that is equal to G1 times S1 times C ref. S is the sizing factor of this gate, right? So let's say S1 is the sizing factor of first gate. Similarly, S2 is the sizing factor of the second gate and G1 is the logical effort of first gate. Right? This is first gate and this is second gate and G2 is the sizing factor of the second gate. So the total input capacitance of first gate is equal to G1 times S1 times C ref. Right? Because if I only find out the input capacitance of this gate, so that will be given by the logical effort formula. That is uh, the logical effort of this gate is equal to G is uh, C of this gate divided by C of reference inverter. Okay. So that is C, that is CG1 here. So CG1 becomes equal to G times C ref. So that is what is appearing over here. G1 times C ref. Okay. So which is coming from this CG1. Okay. Then if we say that we are sizing this inverter number one by a sizing factor of H1. So the total input capacitance which is offered by this gate will be equal to G1 times H1 times C ref. Now the total in uh, capacitance, which is seen by inverter number two because of this. So that will be equal to uh, this much. That is G2 S2 C ref will be equal to now G1 S1 C ref multiplied by F1 by B1. So assuming that uh, this gate, that is second gate is larger by F1 by B1. This is, let's say, unit size. So the other one is F1 by B1. Yeah, this is, for example, here we had F, F square. So here now we have F1 by B, B1. So this will become F2 square by B2 or maybe whatever is the branching effort. Maybe similarly this one F3 cube by whatever is the branching effort. Okay. So that way one can find out the relationship between the input capacitances of all the gates in the chain. Okay. And from these relations, that is N minus one relations, one can find out the total, in fact, generalize uh, the, the equation for sizing factor of each gate. So that equation is actually now this one. That is SI is equal to G1 S1 by GI uh, multiplied by the product of uh, J is 1 to I minus 1 FJ by BJ. So by this relation, size of each gate can be given. Right. So for example, one I put, so size of first gate I'll find out. Two, size of second gate I'll find out. Now let us summarize these things. And in fact, maybe you can note down all these formulas here, which we have uh, you know, found. And then we'll utilize these formulas to find out the sizes of a complex logic chain, right? So please write all these formulas. That is, you write the delay equation first of all. And please note down this stage effort, HI, GIFI, then capital F, then capital G, 
then capital B and capital H and then the total delay. Yeah, write down all these formulas in a notebook. So we are going to use them to find out the delay of and also the sizing of a complex, uh, a chain which has complex logic gates. Okay. Uh, now you also write down these two formulas. Maybe this one you can. Sir, sir, वो लिख नहीं पाते. Maybe you can take a screenshot. Okay. Yeah, so that would be faster, and then maybe you can refer that screenshot. Okay. So shall I move? Yeah. So yes, uh, yeah. So let us say you also write this formula. And then also write this one. And this relation also. And then the minimum path delay. This one also. Okay, done. Yeah, so I hope you have written now. So let us go on to the problem here. So now this is our problem. Maybe you can also draw this problem. So we have to now size all these gates. So we have four gates here, and the input capacitances. So those are also mentioned. That is, input capacitance of this inverter is one. Let us say. And the capacitance of this inverter is A. Let us say this is B, and this is let us say C. And the fan out capacitance Cl that is that is equal to five. And this is my output node. So to find out the sizes of the these complex logic functions in this chain, one has to find out you know all those values. That is these values. and then these values one has to put in the delay equation so before that let us also find out the logical efforts of all these gates so for example logical effort of inverter so that is one because input capacitance is one and for reference of uh, inverter also let us say capacitance is Uh, that was three, three C unit we had for reference inverter. We had three C unit. Okay, so the total, uh, you know, logical effort. So that comes out to be equal to one for this gate. Similarly, for this gate, logical effort is five by three. This is a three input NAND gate, and this is a two input NOR gate. Logical effort is five by three. and for this inverter again the logical effort is 1 for inverter the logical effort we said that it is minimum that is 1 now one can also find out small f that is fan out of each stage so since input capacitance as i said of this gate is a so which is acting as output capacitance for this gate so f will be a by 1 and here we we say that capacitance is 1 it's mentioned over here this is one input capacitance this is input capacitance of a it has input capacitance of b it has input capacitance of c so f for this is a let's say f1 this is g1 this is g2 f2 similarly g3 f3 g4 and f4 so for f2 it is b by a f3 c by b similarly f4 pi by c okay now we can find out capital f g and uh, other things so effective fan out that is capital f 
so that is equal to capacitance which is present at this point and capacitance that is present at this point so which is 5 by 1 so capital f is 5 which is given by cl by cg1 now capital g so capital g can be find out found out by multiplying all small g's a product of all small g's so that is multiplication of 1 by 5 by 3 then 5 by 3 then again 1 so that is 25 by 9 similarly capital h so that is equal to g f b that is capital f capital g and capital b and there is no branching here so we say that b is 1 So capital H can be found by multiplying all this, this G and F. That is five and twenty-five by nine. So this comes out to be equal to thirteen point nine, right? Then small H. So the effort of each stage is equal, right? So all H ones are equal. That is H one is equal to H two is equal to H n, or is equal to H. So effort of any stage is equal. And H is equal to G F. In fact, for H, let us go back. Yeah, H is nth root of H. Right, nth root of H. So this formula you can use. H is nth root of H. So we have four gates. Right, so that is you have H as one point nine three. Similarly, A. Now for A, we have a relationship. We had a relationship earlier, if you remember, from here. The H is F G. Right, and all H are equal. So that means. We have H one is equal to F one G one, okay. And F one was A, and G one was one. Right. So A can be found because F and G we know. So A comes out to be equal to one point nine three. H also we know. All H are equal. So A comes out to be equal to one point nine three. Similarly, B. So we have again a relationship between H two H two is G two F two, and F two is B by A from here. Yeah, this is F two. So F two is B by A put here. F two is B by A. H is same one point nine three. So I have now B as H A by G two, which is equal to two point two three. Similarly, C can be found out okay, by using this relation. F three C by B put here. So B is two point C is two point five nine, right? So these are capacitances. That is, A is the input capacitance of this gate. B is the input capacitance of this. C is the input capacitance of this gate. So that means I have all small f now with us. Okay, f one, f two, f three, all we have, right? So that means f one is now one point nine three. F two is this much, right? So f one, f two, f three, all we have now. Because A, B, C, they required B, A, B, C values for F1, F2, F3. So if you put all A, B, C here, you will find F1, F2, F3. Okay. Now for fi finding out the gate sizes, okay. so for finding out the gate sizes, we will refer the this relation. That is this one here, this one. That is. For first gate size, you will put I as one over here. So if you do that, okay, let us do that. So S one, let's say that S one is minimum size in water, so size is one. So for S two, you put I as two over here, you will get this relation. S two is now F one, G one by G two, G one G two we know, F one also we know. From here, F one we know. And G1, G2 also we know. So S2 can be found. That is size of second gate. Similarly, size of second, uh, third gate. Similarly, size of fourth gate. So all these things can be found. 
right so we have now learned how to size uh, you know a complex uh, a chain of complex logic uh, gates right so not just these gates but any gates now could be sized right the chain of any gate could be sized not just these gates using the same relation so similarly the total delay now can be found using uh, this relation right? that is this relation so using this relation the total optimum delay of this chain can be found now we also learnt that a eight input gate for example here a eight input and gate so this can be splitted okay? now if it can be splitted into for example two four input nine gate uh the logical efforts can also be uh, found out yeah? so logical effort that is here the logical effort was very large 10 by 3 logical effort to produce uh, the same current or maybe the same driving current or same performance as a inverter so this gate had to uh, you know uh, effort more to produce a response that was equivalent to the inverter but now when we resize it that is we uh, reorder them so we find that the logical effort is only 2 2 here so when you further resize it you find that the logical effort of this gate also reduces further so that can be observed yeah so i think we have uh, seen the logical effort uh, technique and for finding out the problems based on logical effort one can refer this book this is a very good book and it has discussed this logical effort technique for sizing a chain so this is by sutherland sproul and harris logical effort so book's name is itself logical effort i think uh, we can end up the class uh, for the day now and if you have any queries then maybe you can ask So the problem which we have solved earlier, uh, so the stage effort is same. Uh, why we taken the stage effort same? Yeah, because the fan out has to be evenly distributed along all these stages. Okay, sir. Okay. Yeah. So uh, maybe if you have any questions, then uh, you can put up your questions. Uh, hello sir yeah please uh, i have some doubt actually that is not related to this lecture uh, can i so ask maybe, now or uh, i maybe, maybe we can keep them uh, later on maybe uh, at the end of the class you can ask so let us only consider doubts related to this lecture so first of all we'll clear them and then maybe we can uh, talk about other things yeah please excuse, excuse me sir yeah please please Sir, while discussing the transistor sizing in the uh, circuit of us, uh, like there is a circuit you had discussed. So in that, we were finding the resist resistance along the path, and in that, uh, in pull-up network, you have mentioned some numbers like along with four eight eight. There is six six. You have mentioned. So I did not understand why six. can you could you explain yeah so uh, you can you know find out the resistances in this case when it is 666 okay. so in this case you can find out the resistances of these paths so this becomes i mean if you size it by a factor of 4 so this becomes rp by 2 so this also becomes rp by 2 so similarly you can find out what happens if it is Three times larger than the actual PMOS, or maybe when it is six times larger than the actual PMOS, and then add add up the total resistances in series. So you will find that the total resistance that comes out to be equal to the resistance of the PMOS of CMOS uh, inverter, which we considered as reference inverter. Okay, sir. Yeah. So find out the resistances. in case when it is sized by 3 and it is sized by a factor of 6 excuse me sir yeah, please sir uh, what is the effect on 
TPLH due to the function of fanning because we discussed the only TPLH uh, is, it is is it independent on fan uh, TPLH should also increase obviously because the output load capacitance is also increasing though the drive strength is also going up so drive we are providing more paths to the charge here right? Yeah, correct. We are providing more uh, more paths. That is, drive current is also now more because of, let's say, four is the input. Uh, you know, fan in so four transistors, four P MOSFETs are working towards charging that trans uh, the capacitance and the output. So obviously, the charging can be fast, but that is the best case scenario. So that depends upon the order of the inputs. So it is possible that three are not on, only one is on. So that depends upon the yeah input pattern. So if the input pattern says only one P MOS is on. So then, that TPLH will be very large in that case. Yes. Yeah. Excuse me, sir. Please, please. Are we not having class for two hours today? Uh, let us restrict to only one hour class itself. Maybe. Uh, you also need some time to digest these things so uh, you know for the compensation of the next class maybe we'll find out some other slot some day some time okay so tomorrow okay. there is no class uh, i mean i just wanted to you know have a class but because of you know you know you don't want so maybe uh, we can you know uh, go by what you say so okay yeah. sir thank you